everybody and welcome to the organic chemistry series. One of the problems organic chemistry students most often struggle with is that of formal charges and lone pairs. So does this atom have any formal charge? How many lone pairs? How many bonds does it make? And when I'm drawing mechanisms, do I have to draw them all the time? So let's address that one at a time. Let's start with formal charges. So if you look at this structure, for example, does it have any formal charge? The easiest way to compute formal charges is to homolytically cleave all the covalent bonds first. So I will cleave this bond and I will look at the oxygen. How many electrons does the oxygen have? It has two, four, six, seven, because half of a bond is worth one electron, okay? So normally oxygen has six electrons. Here it has seven electrons, so it has one extra. It has a charge of minus one. Electrons are negative, one extra electrons means a minus one charge. Let's do the same thing for this structure, looking at the oxygen again. I will break homolytically the double bond and this bond with the methyl. How many electrons does it have? Two, three, four, five. Hmm? So normally oxygen has six electrons. In this case it has five, so it has a charge of plus one. It's missing one electron, okay? If you look at the oxygen in cyclohexanone, it has six electrons. I will let you do that. And if you look at the hydronium ion, if you go through the same mechanism, it will have a positive charge. Okay? That's relatively easy. What about this structure? Does it have any formal charge? Does it have any lone pair? You can't tell. This is ambiguous because it could either be this species with two lone pairs and therefore a negative charge, or it could be this species with only one lone pair and therefore a positive charge. Ambiguous usually means wrong, so you have to specify one of the two. That is, you need the formal charges in order to compute the number of lone pairs, and you need the lone pairs in order to compute the formal charge. You need one to determine the other. By convention, you always express, you always show the formal charge. You only show the lone pairs when you need them. So when you need to push them around for a mechanism, for example. So if you draw the oxygen this way, it's the same as drawing it this way with all the lone pairs. The lone pairs are understood. In the case of carbon, carbon normally has four electrons. If it loses one electron, it has three electrons and a formal charge. So you end up with a methyl carbocation. It's a carbo because it's a carbon cation because it has a positive formal charge. Analogously, if you gain an electron, you end up with a carboanion. So like the methyl carbonion, it's a carbon and it has a negative charge, so it's an anion. But what about oxygen and nitrogen? The common approach is, well, you just memorize it, okay? So if you have an oxygen that makes only one bond, it means it has one bond, three lone pairs, and a negative charge. If you have an oxygen with no charge, it means it has two bonds and two lone pairs. And there is absolutely no need to memorize this. It's a lot easier to understand it. So let's see how. Let's start with nitrogen. We know nitrogen has five electrons, so it looks like this. If I give it as much hydrogen as it can take, it will take three hydrogens to form ammonia. Here I have carbon, which has four electrons, so same story, as much hydrogen as it can bind, it will have methane, and so forth. This is boron, so you will have borane, BH3, and if you keep going in this direction, you find obviously oxygen, which looks like this, so you get, guess what, water, 
and you get fluorine that looks like this, so you get hydrofluoric acid, okay? This is the periodic table. This you should know in your sleep. It's exactly the periodic table only on the diagonal. Now, if you take nitrogen with five electrons and you make nitrogen plus, how many electrons will it have? It has lost one, so it has four electrons. If you give it as much hydrogen as it can take, you will make NH four plus. It's identical to methane because nitrogen plus is isoelectronic with carbon. Isoelectronic, iso is the same. Electronic, it has the same electron configuration as carbon. So let's see if you give one electron to nitrogen. Now nitrogen is minus. One extra electron means six electrons. If you give it as much hydrogen as it can take, it will look like this. NH2 minus. It looks like water because nitrogen minus is isoelectronic with oxygen. And you can keep going in the same way and you end up with this table, which is the isoelectronic series of the second row. So that's what we have just seen. This is neutral nitrogen that makes ammonia, NH3. If you remove one electron from nitrogen, now you have four electrons, which is isoelectronic with carbon. N plus will make NH4 plus, exactly as you make CH4. If you start with carbon, you remove one electron to get a carbocation, it's going to be isoelectronic with boron. You make CH3 plus exactly in the same way you make borane, BH3. Now, this is not to say that the ammonium ion has the same properties as methane. Mm -hmm. This is just a formalism. Formally, they are isoelectronic. They have the same electron configuration, but they have completely different properties. This is just an easy way to figure out formal charges and lone pairs and the number of bonds that each atom makes. Okay, so if you go down here in fluorine, for example, fluorine has seven electrons, it will make hydrofluoric acid, HF. If you make fluoride, you give it one more electron, it will have eight electrons, which has exactly the same electron configuration as neon. Fluoride is stable, it won't bind any hydrogen. So it's very easy to figure these things out, just don't memorize it, look at the periodic table. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next video.